What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who classic review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first Doctor William Hartnell story, The Rescue. Now this is a pretty interesting story, because it was actually the first William Hartnell story I ever saw. The Rescue and the Romans are the only two first Doctor stories that I've seen before starting the classic review series. So this and the Romans are the only two stories you'll ever um, see me review that I have reviewed, uh, that I have seen before with the first Doctor. Um, so yeah, The Rescue is a two-part story. It's the introduction to Vicky, um, the new companion, one of the new companions after Susan left in the Dalek Invasion of Earth. Um, and yeah, it's something that I, it was the first Dog 2 story of the first Doctor I ever saw. So it kind of holds a place in my heart because of that. But anyway, let's read the back of the DVD. This is The Rescue by David Whittaker. When the TARDIS lands on the supposedly peaceful planet Dido at the end of the 25th century, the Doctor, Barbara and Ian discover a crashed spaceship waiting for help. The only survivors have been murdered by natives apart from a young orphaned girl and a paralysed man. But who is the strange cre creature Coquillian that they are afraid of, and will they remain safe long enough to be rescued? So a pretty brief but interesting plot synopsis on the back of the DVD there. Like I said before, this is only a two part story. Pretty rare that we only have about, what, five or something? I don't know exactly the number, but we only have a few of these in the classic series. They're two parts long, so really they add up to be about 45 to 50 minutes long. So, you know, kind of the normal length for one episode in the new series. So that's pretty interesting. But anyway, let's get into this, starting off with the cast. William Hartnell as the first Doctor. Now, I actually think William Hartnell is very good in this story, I really do. Maybe it's just because this is the first story I ever saw of him, so because of that maybe I'm just kind of, I don't know, kind of going towards him a bit more. Um, I don't know what it is, but there's just something about him in this story that I really like. I love his interaction with um, Vicky. I love you know him just talking to Vicky when she's really sad and really upset. Um, just his kind of conversations with Ian and Barbara as well. And I mean, his confrontation to Coquillian at the end is amazing. I just think William Hartnell, yeah, he does stutter a few lines here and there, but to be honest, so do the rest of the cast. Um, there's actually a few stuttered lines in here, but um, you kind of have to forgive that, especially for the 60s. Um, they didn't really have the time um, to, you know, really do retakes or anything. Um, but yeah, I think William Hartnell's phenomenal in this. I really think he does a great job. Comes off as a really grandfatherly figure here. Um, and yeah, just really, really love him in this story. Jacqueline Hill as Barbara Wright. I love her as well. She's really, really good. Um, I do quite like Barbara as, the, as a companion. She's not... I don't like her more than Ian from what I've seen of her so far. But I think she's good. And I, I think especially here she's good. Because she has that different connection to Vicky, you know, because they're both um, women. There's just kind of a bit more of a connection there. And I really like that. Um... Yeah, I think they just have a great connection, and obviously she has great chemistry with Ian and the Doctor as well. Um, and then we have William Russell as Ian Chesterton. I love Ian, I love him more and more every time I watch him, I think he's a great companion. Um, doesn't have a whole lot to do in this story, to be completely honest. Kind of, his main thing is wandering through the caves with the Doctor at the start. Well, kind of in the middle to the end of uh, part one. Um, doesn't do a whole lot, to be honest, throughout the rest of the story, but he is good with what he's given. And then, of course, Maureen O'Brien as Vicky. This is her first story, her debut story. And yeah, I think she's really good. Vicky's a companion that I definitely want to see more of. So far, I've only seen, what, The Rescue, The Romans, and The Time Medal. I'm pretty sure they're the only three Vicky stories I've seen. And yeah, I really want to see more of her. Alright, so on to the good and the bad, starting off with the good. Like I said, it's the introduction to Vicky. Um, I always kind of put these things in the good when um, when a new companion gets um, introduced. I just think it's, it's exciting. It adds more to the story in a way, you know. Um, even just having an introduction to a companion or a new character can just add something to a story, even if it's not a very good story. Um, so yeah, introduction to Vicky, I think she has a great introduction. Um, and yeah, just not really much else I can say about it really. Um, the Doctor forgetting Susan isn't there anymore really heartbreaking moment. I mean, you've got to remember that he only left Susan in the previous story, the previous episode, The Dalek Invasion of Earth. Said goodbye to her, left her on Earth in 20 whatever year it was. Um, and yeah, left her with David. Um, and he's, he's kind of used to having her around all the time in the TARDIS. So then when he's like, oh Susan, and then he remembers that Susan isn't there anymore, he's just got Ian and Barbara. It's a really sad, heartfelt moment. Um, you know, you can, you just see the look in his eyes, just, oh, she's not here anymore. But then you kind of realise, he kind of realises that, no, oh, she's in a better place now, she's doing better things, she's safer. Um, and yeah, I just, I think that's a really great scene. 
Coquillian actually looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is just me that thinks this, but I think Aquilian actually looks fairly decent. Now, by the way, there are always spoilers in these. I never actually address it at the beginning of videos. Maybe I should, but, um, yeah, there's always spoilers in these videos, um, in these reviews. It's kind of hard to do a review without a spoiler. Um, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. But, um, Coquillian turns out, um, that he's actually Bennett, um, the the paralyzed, so-called paralyzed um, crew member with Vicky, it turns out that he is actually um, Coquillian, he's just doing it, I don't know, for whatever reason, um, and yeah, it turns out that's the case, so I think it helps me like the look of Coquillian more, because a lot of Classic Who, um, the costumes look, the alien costumes look like costumes, and I think that does help here, because it is a costume. That, that's what it is. It's it's not it's not a guy dressed up t so that he looks like an alien in the story. It's a guy dressed up to make himself look like an alien, but it's that's you know he is just dressed up. That's part of the story, and I think I think that does help. But even with that aside, I think the um, the I don't know what you call them the people of Dido or whatever um, the Coquillian the let's just call him Coquillian because he's the only one we really see. I think he does look pretty decent. We do also have those um, kind of more monster looking creatures that look like Aquilian. Um I don't know if they're the actual the actual natives or whatever but um, I don't think they are because I'm pretty sure the actual natives do, can walk around and stuff or is there. They're kind of like slug creature things but you know they actually look pretty cool as well. Um, I found this a lot with classic with, with 60s who because I think you know the fact that we have it in black and white um, it actually kind of masquerades some of the the crap costumes and stuff. Um, having it in black and white actually does help quite a lot. And yeah, I really like Gaquillian's um, look. Ian getting pushed towards the edge of the cliff by the wall spikes. Yep, episode one's cliffhanger. Um, the Doctor and Ian are scaling the cl cliffs and they end up setting off a trap and it, um, the walls um, end up kind of shooting, well not shooting out, they're very, very slow. Slowly protruding spikes, um, you know, kind of pushing Ian towards the edge of the cliff. I think it's a pretty cool cliffhanger. I mean, he does get away from it pretty easily and unscathed in episode two. But um, yeah, I thought it was a fairly interesting, exciting cliffhanger. Um, the Doctor talking with Vicky, like I said before, really, really good scene when he talks down, talks, talk, talk. He doesn't talk down to Vicky. He talks with Vicky. You know, he's like, "What's going on? Are you all right?" You know, I, he feels so grandfatherly. That's from what I've seen so far, I think that's the most grandfatherly he's felt. Because thing is, I've seen quite a lot of his early, early stuff, beginning of series one, and then I've seen a bit of his later stuff as well. Um, this part, kind of in between, you know, start of season two, you know, this is where he's really more grandfatherly, and he's just such a likable character, and he really shows that off in this scene. And then finally, the Doctor finding out who Coquillian really is. I think that whole scene was just really good. Um, I think it was fairly obvious to him that he twigged it. He twigged it on pretty quickly. Um, you know, when he went into Bennett's room, he kind of thought, "Okay, I know what's going on here," and found the trapdoor. Um, but I think the whole kind of confrontation between him, Coquillian, and stuff—just um, a really, really good scene. Really great acting all around. All right, onto the bad things. There's not a whole lot. Um, my first thing, though, is. I think it's a bit of an anticlimactic end for Bennett with him just falling to his death backwards basically he just walks backwards he's scared of what I think are his crew members um, you know surviving crew members he's scared of him he's like how did you survive they basically just heard him off a cliff and he dies I thought that was very quick and very anticlimactic like really anticlimactic um, but I mean yeah it was alright, I just thought it was a bit of a crap way to end him. Um, you know, if you had a bigger, you know, three or four part episode, you would have probably done more with that, but um, yeah, as it was, that's how it ended. Um, also, I don't know if this is really a bad thing or if this is just me not really quite understanding, but those two people, you know, that I told you, the, the supposed crew, I think, that kind of shoved um, Coquillian off the cliff, herded him off the cliff, were they actually his crew? I don't really understand what was going on there like you know they were very they didn't talk at all they just looked very stern and walked after him and then um when the um ship when the you know the rescue ship came to get them 
um, and tried to radio through, they destroyed all the machinery. And I was, I was a bit confused about what was going on there. Were they, were they part of the crew? Were they inhabitants of Dido? I, I don't really know. I'm, th I'm pretty sure they were crew, but why did they not want the rescue ship? I don't really understand that. So the rescue, did I enjoy it? Yes, I did. I think it's it's possibly my favourite two-parter so far. Um, the Santaran experiment's up there, and it's, it's probably right there with it. I'm going to give the rescue an 8 out of 10. You can't really give a two-part story anything more. I mean, you, maybe you can. Maybe I just haven't seen the best one yet, but I just don't feel like, you know, they have that much to them, and that is the same here. It's a very enjoyable and fairly well-paced story, but it is fairly short when you consider what Classic Who is, and there's just not a lot going on in it. So an 8 out of 10 is as much as I'm going to give it, but I do really enjoy it. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Go and follow me on Twitter in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.